I avoided calcium reactors for a long time, because although they are renowned for being a low maintenance solution to provide alkalinity, calcium and trace elements to your tank, you are advised to buy and set up a great deal of equipment to get it working properly. A calcium reactor is basically a container where we put media and inject CO2 to lower the pH and dissolve the media. But if the concept is so simple, why does this process require so much equipment? I decided to use a much simpler solution, which included the calcium reactor itself, a CO2 tank and a reliable way of precisely control the amount of CO2 that is injected into the reactor. And that's it. No dosing pump, no pH control, no probes, no pH calibration. This also means less points of failure. The reason I don't use a dosing pump is because I'm feeding the calcium reactor through gravity at a high flow, between 200 and 300 milliliters per minute. I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. I don't care what's the pH inside the reactor. I care about the alkalinity in the tank. So, when I set up the reactor, instead of monitoring pH inside the reactor, I measure the alkalinity in the tank every day, during the first few weeks, and I made small adjustments to the amount of CO2 being injected into the calcium reactor, until I got the alkalinity in the tank stable. I made no adjustment to the effluent flow, it flows freely. Since adjusting the number of CO2 bubbles per minute is the only way of controlling the calcium reactor, and therefore the alkalinity in the tank, I need a reliable and precise way of controlling it. I made the mistake of not doing enough research about this device, and I got one that doesn't allow a precise adjustment of the number of bubbles per minute. I started with this setup, and I had a very hard time using it. So, we're looking at the bubble counter for the CO2 and I'm going to try to make the smallest adjustment possible to the rate of bubbles we're seeing. Well, I tried to reduce it and the slightest movement I made on the wheel uh, cause this huge uh, change in the rate of CO2. I'm going to try to open it and it's too much and I moved less than a millimeter. So the precision here, it's, um, it's terrible. Regardless of how you run a calcium reactor, you need to have a reliable and precise control on the CO2. I then got the Aquamedic pressure regulator for precise control of CO2 and the shutoff valve for CO2, the m ventil standard. And it's been extremely precise and reliable. If the alkalinity demand of the tank changes because the corals grow, for example, this setup allows really precise changes in the amount of CO2 being injected into the reactor. This is the only control over the alkalinity of the tank and it needs to be top-notch. I don't use a dosing pump, I'm feeding the calcium reactor using a RO tube that is placed inside the overflow and goes down a free pipe and feeds the reactor. I could also have passed it through the emergency drain, or simply passed the RO tube outside the tank. I first tried a transparent airline tube, but it grew algae inside quickly and it clogged. Since I changed it to a black tube, I haven't had any clogging problems, and it just takes a couple of minutes to clean it every three months or so with the shower hose. If the power is out for a long time, the tube still sucks out water from the overflow, which would eventually break the siphon after the overflow is empty. But this will only happen if the return pump fails, because I have a backup battery for the return pump. I let the effluent flow freely at around 200 to 300 milliliters per minute, without restrictions. This helps to prevent clogging. I found that at this high flow, there is no difference in the alkalinity in the tank whether the flow is 200 or 300 milliliters per minute. This is a bubble magus calcium reactor. 
although it has a port to connect the pH probe, I'm not using it. This reactor recirculates the CO2, and maybe this is the reason why this simple setup works with such high flow through the reactor. The CO2 that is undissolved collects at the top and is injected back into the circulation pump. I've been using this setup for over 7 months now and I'm still using the same 5kg CO2 tank. I'm injecting around 43 bubbles per minute of CO2, so this setup doesn't require a high amount of CO2 in spite of the high effluent rate. I have a Senai monitor and it monitors pH in the tank. The pH is pretty stable and high throughout the day. I achieve this in two ways. I use Kalkwasser in the RO water to start with and it's being dosed 24 times per day. The RO tank has 135 liters and it's enough for almost a month, so I fill the tank and mix Kalkwasser once every 4 weeks. The refugium runs in an opposite schedule to the tank and the calcium reactor effluent flows into the refugium to help with the macroalgae growth and reduce the CO2 getting back into the tank. I think the large waterfall from the refugium to the return pump compartment helps too. Since I changed to the Aquamedic system, this has been a reliable and simple setup, but it can be improved. Although the calcium reactor provides a steady and balanced flow of calcium, alkalinity, magnesium and trace elements to the tank, the tank consumption has occasional spikes if I disturb the corals for example. It will benefit with the use of an alkalinity monitor. I'm waiting for the coral monitor from Senai to be released. <laughs>